Welcome to Field Sports Britain and our 300th episode. I know, I'm as surprised as you are. Coming up, the gift of grouse. Why this wild game bird is good for business. The marvellous Mikelka is in Africa after zebra. First, we're in Hungary with Kayat Brin after mouflon and boar. on his first international hunting trip. It's not a bad introduction. He's stalking in the ancient forests of northeastern Hungary, courtesy of Wonder Art Hunting. The hunting in the past has been pretty much what the UK type hunting. I've been to Red Deer in Scotland, Roe Deer down south, Munjag around Essex, Cambridgeshire. A lot of, a lot of feral pigeons and, and rats and rabbits and all that kind of things. So to come out here and to experience a European hunt with the variety of animals that are here, it's absolutely amazing. We've been here less than 24 hours and already we've seen red deer, road deer, pigs, mouflon now, and apparently there's bears and wolves and everything in this forest. It's a stunning, stunning place. He's told our guide that he's after meat for the table, so the recommendation is a young boar or mouflon. We know there's plenty of game here, but it's tough going when we're in the midst of a central European heat wave. With temperatures in the high 30s, the animals are sitting tight and moving at night, so we need to be out and at them early. Just a few hundred yards from our drop-off, there's a sounder of boar 60 yards in front of us. They know something's afoot, but don't make a run for it. The guide gestures to Kai to take one of the piglets. Kai picks one out in the semi-darkness, standing between the trees. He shoots and drops the piglet. Unfortunately, it's the piglet to the right of the other one between the trees. So we just come into the woods. It's about 5 a.m. And our guide took us a half hour drive up through the mountains for the forest. It's a beautiful drive. We just came here, just come round the corner, about 10 minutes into the stalk. We'll see, we'll see a family of pigs up in the woods. A guy told us to take the young one, I was eating between the trees. So I got ready and took it out, straight behind the neck. Nice small little pig loop. Communication is key when out hunting. Anyway, we have a young boar for the pot. The guide wants us to carry on and see what else might be about. With the sun starting to reach the forest floor, the guide stops and just watches for a few minutes. It pays off because, unbeknown to us, on the other side of our position, two mouflon have ventured out into the open. Kai spots them as we turn to retread our steps. A young ewe is grazing on moss on a fallen tree. She presents a longish but good shooting opportunity. It's a great shot. Within an hour, we have a young boar and mouflon before the heat pushes the animals into thick cover. Really pleased with that. The first mouflon that I've, that I've shot. It was a nice shot as well. Went straight through, straight through the engine room. It dropped straight away. When we got closer, it's a bit smaller than I thought it was going to be because we we're quite a distance back. But I would say it's probably about 150, 180 yards back. But really happy. Good shot. We take that way now, back to the larder. Thank you again. Yeah. <laughs> Been a bit of a mixed bag this morning. Really pleased though. We've got, we've got two really nice animals. We've got a, a small piglet and a ewe. Unfortunately, David had not been to spec savers. And we, uh, he missed the pig I was looking at. But we did get it. And uh, shortly after, we've got this lovely young ewe. Both will make exceptional eating. 
For more information about hunting in Hungary, go to wonderheart.co.uk. For more information about Kai's hunting gear, go to shooterking.co.uk. And for more about the Zawa rifle, go to zawa.de. Well done, Kai. And he will be cooking both wild boar and mouflon in a future episode. A bit of Wales and a bit of Hungary there, a kind of minty goulash. Now from Welsh influencers to a Welshman under the influence, it is David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Zimbabwe will sell 500 elephant trophies next year. Zimbabwe has 20,000 elephants. Ignoring the bad press after Cecil the Lion case, the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority set a target of 500 leopards, 200 crocodiles and 50 cheetahs in 2016. It expects the sale of the 500 elephants to raise $30 million. Air Canada has banned the transport of trophies from any of the big five. The airline will refuse to carry trophies including elephant, buffalo, lion, leopard or rhinoceros to or from Africa. One problem, Air Canada doesn't fly to Africa. Thanks to viewer Andrew Norden for spotting that one. Two animal rights activists in the USA have been charged with domestic terrorism. Joseph Buddenberg and Nicole Kizane face up to 10 years in prison after freeing almost 6,000 mink across the US. They were arrested by the FBI. The bear hunting season is about to get underway in the USA. In some states, it begins on the 1st of September, the same day as the British wildfowling season. Their numbers are on the increase across the USA and in Turkey, where the Turkish Fall and Waterworks Ministry has set out the bear licence at around £2,000. 15 bears will be shot in October, with trophy hunters accompanied by both a guide and a man from the ministry. And finally, an American cartridge company has brought out a shell specifically designed to bring down drones. It's a 3-inch 12-bore cartridge that comes in 2-shot and BB. The drone munition brand provides a cost-effective solution for self-defence, as well as working on small game, waterfowl and turkeys, says manufacturer Snake River Shooting Products. But who needs a cartridge like that when you've got a beech tree in a Hungarian forest? You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, grouse moors are very special places, but more people need to understand that. You'll have heard of the gift of life, gift of laughter and gift of love, but now there's the gift of grouse. It's not a bird in a bow tie box, but a project to highlight the riches that flow when grouse and its moorland habitat are taken seriously. We're trying to highlight the environmental benefits all the, the um, other bird species and habitat up on the moorlands that is looked after as a byproduct of grouse management. We're also trying to highlight the tourism benefits. Uh, grouse shooting is quite a big part of the, uh, the shooting and stalking industry, which is very important to Scotland. It's reported that grouse shooting plays a major part in the £200 million a year generated by shooting and stalking every year. Nearly a million bed nights are taken by tourists hoping to experience the best of Scottish sport. The 12th of August for us here at Glen Clover Hotel is, is fundamental uh, to the business. The grouse season gives a, a huge amount to, to the hotel, not only just here, but from neighbouring estates as well. The Scottish Moorland Group are the ones behind the campaign. Their research shows that grouse shooting is responsible for £30 million in wages supporting 2,500 full-time jobs from gamekeepers to innkeepers and the local 4x4 garage. When you think that a lot of these activities are taking place in, in really remote, fragile rural areas, um, the local hotel, the shops, petrol stations, all these people are going to benefit from those people coming in to enjoy the sport. The project has been created to coincide with the start of the grouse season but has had to share column inches with the discovery of a dead hen harrier that has been named locally as Annie. Tests show Annie was shot and RSPB Scotland is calling for moors to be licensed. 
Of course, the biggest hill to climb is not to the grouse butt, but PR to show that grouse shooting isn't just for the privileged few, and gamekeepers don't spend all their time shooting, trapping and persecuting birds of prey. It's not going to be easy, but without making some noise about the obvious benefits that come from dedicated management of this harsh environment, the gift of grouse and the environmental and economic riches that come from it will disappear. Now, from fast flying birds to Michaela, this week our pet bouncing check is hunting in Africa. When a dentist from Minnesota shone the spotlight on hunting in Africa this year, he started a debate that Michaela is happy to have with anyone. Is hunting African animals good for African animals? Yes, she says, it is. Hunters pay lots of dollars compared to ordinary tourists. Most big animals in Africa have to pay their way. Today, Michaela is out after a zebra in South Africa that is here because of hunting. No hunting, no zebra. The rolling hills of the Eastern Cape are beautiful. Nelson Mandela is buried here, and this place is famously good for big game hunting, which he enjoyed too. Here he is with a bless box he shot in 1991 in the Low Veld. And here is Michaela's herd of zebra. They have spotted her, but they do not know yet if she is a threat. Michaela and the zebra start a game of African snakes and ladders. She goes up and gets some height on them, they run down the hill. She creeps round to get below them, they run up the hill. She spends a lot of time in the heat of the African day waiting for them, trying to stay out of sight. Sometimes she gets them in her sights, but this is not death in the long grass. This group is a textbook picture of when not to shoot. The bullet could go through one of them and injure another behind it, so Michaela doesn't shoot. At last, everybody is in the right place. The one she shoots is so full of adrenaline it runs off into the bush. Sure enough, there is blood. This is when they use the dogs. Michaela is really happy. She's having a smoke and telling the Czech viewers about the hunt when her host surprises her. Ah oh well, she's Czech. She's used to hunting traditions. There are all kinds of game here, and I say it again, they are only here thanks to hunting. There is even a giraffe. Some people don't like giraffe hunting, but when you have an old bull and his trophy will pay for you to keep his family safe from poachers, why not sell him? Michaela has a client, a businessman from Slovakia, who wants to hunt just such a giraffe. They are now in the free state in the centre of South Africa. First, they spot a family of giraffes who eye them warily. As you can see, here is a giraffe's family, but here is no one good old bull, nothing. They are just leaving, but we gotta keep walking and try to find some old bull or we can shoot. When it happens, it happens quickly. On the shot. Again, again. Reload. Come, 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 come. They reach the spot where the animal should be standing, but there's nothing there. They're worried that the shot is too far back on the animal and that it's running injured into the bush. Then they spot it on the ground. Okay, stop! Good, 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 good. Michaela's client is very happy. She calls up the vehicle. So successful, we got everything done. So you can pick us and yeah, giraffe is down. It's perfect. The professional hunter is pleased that the animal dropped at once, but he gives Michaela's client some instruction on where to shoot next time. You need to go up the front leg and shoot on this part over here. It looks like you're going too much forward, but you're still hitting all the vitals of the head here. Michaela wants you to see this not because she thinks you're going to rush out and book a giraffe hunt, but because it shows what the big game hunting business in South Africa is like. 
The professional hunters are really skilled. Not only do they know how to track game, they know how to set it up for a good photograph after it's done, and they can discuss how the client would like it skinned, ready for the taxidermist. Okay, I think you want the shoulder mount with the legs. Okay, perfect. And the back skin? Yes, we will keep a back skin and also the legs. Loading the giraffe onto the truck is not easy either. The game handling facility here is superb and the staff are soon at work cutting the cape of the animal to the client's requirements. And they even get to eat some of the giraffe that evening. Nothing goes to waste. This is Africa. For more about Michaela's hunting stories and for more videos, visit michaelkashunting.com. From South Africa to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Some people love this kind of thing, some can't stand it. It depends on the character. I am a fan of this guy, Don Mealy. He's irritable, I feel he doesn't like me, the viewer, but he does tell his story well. This story is a Wyoming pronghorn hunt, and if you are wondering why he's a bit strange looking, it's because he's just been cooling off in a swamp. Also in Wyoming, stuck in the rut is on a mule deer hunt. Brothers Travis and Tom Schneider draw a group tag for mule deer. They pack four days worth of food and dry gear, hike into public land and set out to find their buck. There's a point where video diary is good enough to be called documentary and that is what you get with this film about hunting and fishing in New Zealand's Chatham Islands. It's good Kiwi banter as well as a portrait of an extraordinary place. The All-American Turkey Hunt comes to you this week from Slade NW. Baker, Leavitt and Erin Lavoie set out on a spring turkey hunt in Washington State, USA. They are likeable Americans. I've been looking forward to this. I think it is officially the first gator hunt film of 2015. Let me know if I'm wrong. Deke catches a 7 foot 7 inch female and a 9 foot 3 inch male. The French seem to be enjoying Patagonia this week. This film is an introduction to what's huntable in the Andes in South America as opposed to the Andes anywhere else. It's a trailer and promo but well made. And here are the French out bird shooting in South America. Universe Chasse is in Argentina after ducks and doves. And finally once it gets there, Chasseau Sanglier 2015-2016, a wild boar hunt in Provence in France, is a jolly pre-season video diary with a lot of jiggly camera work or first person POV depending on how you look at it. Some knowledge of French would help you. Excitable, these foreigners. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And if you don't like those, perhaps you'll like this. Schools Challenge TV is at the CLA Game Fair. Liam from the Oxford Gun Company and TSC regular Jess are roaming the aisles looking for great grub and loud bangs. They try out the muzzle loaders and discuss what's good about getting a job in shooting. Plus, Holland and Holland unveils its new H&H Range Rover. Click on the link on the screen for more. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.